so we're gonna have communion today we are really excited for that um pray we're gonna pray for um disorders in the blood uh, anemia um, leukemia cancers in the blood blood pressure problems and diabetes and, and other we're gonna really believe for that today and also uh, pray for curses that get passed on in the bloodline as we take communion next Sunday is a prayer line we are really excited for a prayer line if you have an, a demonic attack in your life we would love to pray for you come at nine o'clock we're going to interview you a little bit talk to you and then there's going to be a prayer line at 10 o'clock we are really excited for that service um, also starting next Sunday or Sunday after that we're going to start a series called forgotten God where we're going to talk about the person and the gifts and the anointing of the Holy Spirit I am so excited for that I think it's going to be the best it's going to be the blast and the best time amen without further ado because our time is slipping further and further I'm going to go ahead and read from Proverbs chapter 3 verse 20 33 Proverbs 3 33 the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the house of the just the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the house of the just this and along with many other verses indicates to us the curses point number one get passed on through bloodline curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked meaning not only on the wicked but on his house and I know it's not fair but so is the other part the blessing of the Lord is not on the just it's on the house of the just see we like the second part we're like well that's not fair because that's favor but the first part I rejected that's not true just because you don't like it it doesn't make it not true just because you were theologically trained differently see we don't come to the Bible and move the Bible to how we grew up in our tradition we move our tradition to what the Bible says and the Bible clearly states the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked not on the life of the wicked not only on his future on his house sucks to belong to his house <laughs> but the blessing of the Lord is on the house of the just now this verse I struggled with this verse because the part of where it says the curse of the Lord you know I would think that the curse of the devil you know because in our mind we think God doesn't curse we think God doesn't send people to hell it's the devil that sends people to hell if the devil the hell is the devil's place the curses is the devil's thing but hell is not wasn't invented by the devil hell was invented by God and God sends him into it and here we see the curse of the Lord I'm going to give you five sources of curses the first source is God where God allows curses you may say well that's that's just not fair you must understand one thing in the scriptures you see many references where God permits curses to come into people's lives it's not because God is saying that you reject me and like like your mad jealous ex-boyfriend you know I'm gonna go smite you and I'm just gonna go hurt the windows in your car why because if you're not with me you're not gonna be with no one else it's not because God is throwing a fit but when you step away from the protection of the light you step into the darkness that is the reality and God being sovereign he permits that it's not his perfect will because God's perfect will is to bless you but if you choose not him he will allow his permissive will to kick in and his permissive will is curse it is not his desire but if he will honor you enough to let you go self-destruct if you really choose that and if you really want it the second source of curses is man of God in authority many times in the Bible we saw man of God pronounce curses Joshua pronounced cursed on Jericho and Jericho when it was rebuilt it came at the cost of one man's two children our Lord Jesus pronounced a curse on a fig tree and the fig tree died now that doesn't mean that it's like well I want to be a man of God to go around cursing people Bible calls us to bless but there are times when a man of God will stand in the anointing and pronounce a curse and that curse will happen I heard stories when people during prayer felt anointed by the Holy Spirit pronounced the curse on the bar next to church and then two days later the bar caught on fire for no reasons and burned to the ground the wind was supposed to move the fire to the church and burn the church the wind stopped and the fire did not affect the church 
So don't mess with the man of God. <laughs> the third source of curses is people in authority. It's parents when they can curse their children. It's when husbands they can curse their wives. For example, the husband says, I'm sick of your cooking. You find out very quickly he will start having stomach problems. And the wife will be great in business and everything except kitchen. She can remarry, find a different husband, but she will not have a good success in kitchen because the husband cursed her. When parents curse their children, you will never amount to anything. And the kid says, oh no, I'll prove you wrong. And then you find the kid not being able to succeed. Be careful when you are in authority as a teacher, as a, an employer, as a parent and as a husband. Your words carry power. You can curse your children by your words. The third, the fourth source of curses is self-imposed curses. It's when you bring a curse upon yourself. It's interesting, God told Abraham that I'm going to bless you and those who bless you I will bless. Those who curse you I will curse. But when Jesus was being crucified, the Jewish people, they said let his blood be on us and our children. And they brought a self-imposed curse on themselves. God loves Jewish people. God loves the Hebrews and he protects them from the curses of others. When Balaam wanted to curse them, God didn't allow Balaam to do that. But God could not protect them from cursing themselves. God will protect you spiritually sometimes from witch doctors and spells. But if you go around cursing yourself, you, you remove the protection of God. Many curses are self-imposed. When you walk around saying things like, I am worthless, I am nobody, nobody will ever marry me. Who tells you to? Who pays you to say that? Nobody. So stop saying that. Say the positive things in Jesus name. Can somebody say amen? Number five is the servants of Satan. It's when the witch doctors, the people who practice occult and witchcraft, practice divination and sorcery, when they pronounce a curse on you. And if that curse is deserved, meaning if you've done something to deserve that curse, it will begin to stick to you. Many Westerns, we are very oblivious to spiritual world. People even make fun of the, the witch doctors. And they're like, oh, these people don't have any power. You're wrong. The Bible says God has given us authority over the power of the devil. If Satan wouldn't have a power, God wouldn't bother to say that he, he, he we wouldn't need authority. The magicians of Egypt, they did duplicated first three things that Moses did. They turned their rod into snake. They brought water, they brought blood out of the water. You know, they did exactly the same thing, but after a while their magic expired. But don't be a fool thinking that the magic, the spells and these things are harmless and that they are just don't have power. They do. Especially if you are the person that is doing wrong things, those spells can stick to you. It can actually destroy you. This doesn't let us, we don't have to walk around in fear if somebody says I'm a witch. You don't start shaking. But you're just cautious. You, you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ and you are aware they got the power. You got just more. They have the power but Jesus has all the power and he happens to live inside of you. Can somebody say amen? And the sixth one is objects. The source of curses is objects. It's when you bring certain objects into your home that are um, that have been prayed for or been destined to bring good luck to you or charm. Sometimes people do that. I, I watched a testimony in T.P. Joshua's church where one man couldn't get married and so he went into this witch and uh, this lady gave him a soap. And in some cultures they called herbalists, in some cultures they called medicine men actually. In some of the other cultures they're, they're not called witch doctors, they call medicine men. Where they go and they give you certain things, charms and other things to work in your favor. So this man who couldn't find a woman and couldn't find nobody to be attracted to him, he takes this soap given by the witch doctor and he washes himself in this soap, goes to a next social gathering and women are like bees and honey, they just go at him. So he chooses the best one gets married two months later a wife that he's married to he keeps taking the soap so that you know the charm wouldn't wear off and after two months runs out of the soap and the woman one day wakes up takes all of his clothes burns them and burns the house and wants to kill him so he runs quickly to tb joshua because the charms start working you know because he wanted to have the bigger charm now the god charm he comes in and tb joshua through the prophecy reveals to him and he says listen your problem is that you're working with the devil and this woman if you're not delivered she's gonna kill you so he gets delivered he gets forgiven and then that woman gets delivered and then they actually naturally fell in love instead of through some charm charms they destroy people but so is good objects for example when we take communion today the Bible says the cup of the Lord 
is for blessing. Anointing oil is for blessing. Anointing water is for blessing. Objects can be the sources and the channels for the spiritual world. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. So the curses don't just come from the devil. If you step away from the Lord, you step into curse. It's just like this. If you're walking into our park, our parking lot and one of our awesome ushers are walking with the umbrella and you're walking under the umbrella, guess what's going to happen? The rain is not going to fall on you. You step outside of the umbrella then you're gonna get wet when you step outside of the obedience to God you don't, don't necessarily lose your salvation but you lose the protection from the Lord and you step into the territory of a curse the verse in Exodus I want you to read this verse is it says God he's keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. I want you to notice here three words that interchangeably are used for sin. Iniquity, transgression and sin. In Greek we know sin means to miss the mark. So for example if you're going to your airplane, airport um, or you're going to a flight and you come in late you miss. What, what's the word? It's called sin. So next time when you miss the flight you sinned according to Greek. So what we use as sin, we use it in religious like you, you've done something terrible. It just simply means you missed your flight, you missed your meeting, you missed something. You were shooting for it, you missed it. And so that's what actually word sin means. Word transgression is another word for trespass. It means when you cross the line or you cross the boundary. For example, there are boundaries, there are things, there are fences that says keep out, you know, stay away. And of course we climb over it. That is transgression. That is trespassing. Word iniquity means, one of the definition means to be bent. To be bent, meaning you have a certain bent in your character, in your behavior toward a particular behavior that is typically negative. And it's interesting in the scriptures many times iniquity is always tied to the father. You will find many verses and I do not have time to go through them right now. You will find many, not all, but many verses where it will say this. Iniquity of the fathers, meaning the things your daddy struggled with, you struggle with. His bent toward anger. You're like, I hate that he gets angry. I'll never be angry until you get married. And your wife looks at you like, you're just like your father iniquity of the father divorce iniquity of the father sometimes even illness a certain bent in the family and you can hate your father that is not the message today is to say well I have I found out a solution all of my problems my parents are responsible for it that's not going to change anything. Bible doesn't teach us this so we can go blame our parents. Bible teaches us so we can take responsibility and we can release ourselves from the curse and find ourselves in a blessing. Can somebody say amen? Because you will quickly find your own father is battling certain challenges that are coming from his father. And we're all battling certain things and instead of fighting a father we should fight the iniquity of the father and break that over our lives so that our children can live in the blessing of our God. Can somebody say amen. It's interesting when Jesus came and he cursed he went to look for the for the fruit in the tree and he couldn't find the fruit in the tree and he didn't curse a branch he cursed the tree. Listen he did not curse a leaf he cursed the whole tree and the whole tree died. Many of us know that family is like a tree. That's why we even say family tree. And when a family tree comes under a curse, the family tree begins to experience what the fig tree experienced. It begins to wither away. Family begins to wither. The marriage begins to wither. Finances begin to wither. Health begins to wither. The, the, the happiness begins to wither. You walk into that, you will see just the withering of a family tree. But the same Jesus can also bring healing and restoration to a family tree. So bloodline curses are real and if you are here today maybe you grew up in an in environment, church environment where generational curses that was somebody just laughed about that like those crazy churches. I respect that but this is not just coming from the Old Testament verses. This is not just coming from the scripture where it says in Galatians Jesus took the curse that we will have the blessing of Abraham. The teaching that we present to you comes also from hundreds and thousands 
of real life stories where people are battling with things that are generational. We are not teaching that you should blame your generation. We teach that you should resist the demons, the devil and the curses and break and release yourself from those curses. Point number two, the blood of Jesus breaks the curses. So the curses come through the blood but also curses get broken through the blood. The greater blood, the blood of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. The blood carries curses but the blood of Jesus breaks curses. The story that comes that reminds me is the story of Rahab. Rahab lived in Jericho. Jericho was a cursed city. Jericho was a pagan city. They did immoral things and they worshiped other gods. And Rahab, she was the cream of the crop of that city. She was a prostitute, most likely a temple prostitute. Meaning she was working as a priestess in the temple, initiating men into more demons by having sex or intercourse with them. She was a harlot. Her, her profession wasn't noble. There was nothing noble about her life. But somewhere inside she heard that there's God who is mighty and she started to develop this hunger for this God. And one day two spies came into the city. She quickly hid them in her house and she told them that I heard about your God. And your God sounds fascinating. And as she hid the spies and she protected them. Before the spies left her, the spies told her, we are going to come back to this city. But no longer to spy, to demolish it. That everybody in this city is going to die. And as she was letting them out, the spies told her, the robe that you're letting us out by, the scarlet robe, means the red robe. As you're letting us out of this robe, keep this robe hanging from the window of your house. Because her house was on the wall. Because when we come back, we're going to preserve you and your family. Make sure everyone in your family is in your house and we're going to preserve you. Now there's only one problem with that plan. None of these spies had weaponry to destroy the wall. They didn't have tanks. They didn't have bazookas. They did not have missiles. They had nothing in their arsenal to destroy the wall. They had no ability to destroy the wall. The person who would be destroying the wall would be God. So here they are on behalf of God saying to a prostitute, your house in the wall is going to be preserved if you stay in the house and if you have a red scarlet hanging from the window of your house. How could they have the audacity to tell this cursed woman, the curse will not destroy you. Why? Because you have this red thing hanging from your house. Because see these very spies 40 years ago were in Egypt where darkness and destruction was walking by and it was just red blood. Not their blood. The animal blood was over their house and the same death that was visiting Jericho passed over them in Egypt. And they knew something about God. If he sees the blood he will pass over. Even if he's going to be pushing the whole wall and you've been a harlot. But if he sees the blood hanging from the window of your house, he will skip over your apartment in the wall and give you salvation. The blood breaks the curse. The blood breaks the curse. The blood of Jesus is stronger than every cancer cell. The blood of Jesus is stronger than every divorce that has been going on from a generation to generation. You have to understand the blood of Jesus is stronger than poverty and any other thing that comes against your family in Jesus name. Can somebody say amen. You know physically speaking your blood in your body, 7% of your body is, the, the doctors will say that there's blood, 7% of your body is blood. Blood has seven functions. One it receives our waste. Every waste toxins in our body the blood receives that. It's kind of like the blood of Jesus. It receives our sin. Blood also sends oxygen. Blood transports nutrients. One of the functions of the blood is it sends or releases hormones. So if you got hormone problem, you got blood problem. Blood maintains balance in the fluids. Blood sends heat and this is my favorite one. Blood fights microorganisms. Blood not only is almost like a trash can where it receives all the junk, blood is also a fighter where it fights against all the microorganisms that come against your body. See the blood of Jesus Christ when you begin to put your trust in his blood, not only it can wash you from your sin, not only it opens the door for the Holy Spirit but the blood of Jesus Christ becomes an agent, becomes a fighting agent on your behalf against the demons and the curses that are passed on through your bloodline. 
The Bible says the blood cries out louder, better things than the blood of Abel. Blood of Jesus has a voice. The blood of Jesus has a voice. It's a spiritual force that fights for us and wins for us. We are not believers. People say, well, all you talk about is generational curses. The reason why we talk about generational curses is because many people will not appreciate the blood of Jesus Christ to overcome those curses. We believe in generational blessings. We believe in the power of the blood that breaks the generational curses in the name of Jesus. Church, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Number three is that blessings are released by the blood. Not only blood breaks the curses but blood of Jesus, it releases the blessings. It releases the blessings in our life. It changes the story of our family. I want you to see this verse in Matthew chapter 1. The verses that typically if you start a Bible reading plan you typically skip over this. It's when Abraham begotten Isaac. You're like you know what I've always knew women give birth but the Bible is such a supernatural book. The only book where you find men giving birth. You know it's like how is this possible but since God God's word is true I just believe in that you know. <laughs> And so you, you, you see this verses, this is the verses that I always used to skip. First 14 or 17 verses, I was like, uh, this is completely not for me. I have no, un, un, no idea and no care. I know the deeper understanding, but I want you to see this. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. It's interesting. Not only Rahab's house gets preserved, Rahab relocates to Israel. Not only that, you never see once Rahab going and making money by selling her body. Someone who lived in prostitution all your life, you don't have any other trades. You don't have any other skills but to sell your body, but to seduce men. Rahab, not only this red scarlet preserved her apartment, it completely changed her life. She relocates to Israel she finds a husband who the historians say this was one of the spies. She gets married to a guy named Salmon. Not only she is married, so we're not talking right now the curse is broken. Not only she stops you know sleeping around, not only she stops doing all of these bad things, she produces with her husband a guy named Boaz. Remember Boaz? Who, who does he marry? He marries Ruth. Who is Ruth? Ruth comes from Moab. Ruth comes from a very broken family. So Ruth marries Boaz and guess who tells Ruth that listen, the curses, listen honey, the curses you had, they're broken. Because I came from Jericho. You came from Moab. They got a whole family, people breaking curses. Ruth's curse was broken. She came from Moab. Moab is a nation that took their children through fire to kill them. They practiced nasty stuff and Ruth brought that curse with her but when she connected herself to a new family that ended and her mother-in-law Rahab was there to mentor her. Guess what child that Ruth and Boaz had. They had Obed. Obed became the father to Jesse and Jesse became the father to David and David became one of the most royal kings. This family in a Jewish nation, the family of David is considered as one of the most noble and royal families of a Jewish nation. Going from a house of shame to a hall of fame. Going from a zero to a hero. Going from a mess into a great miracle. I mean we're not talking about here my curses are broken. This woman became part of a blessing that continued from a generation to generation to generation. And if you want to not end that Jesus comes and his messianic title is the son of David. The son of a ch the child who came from a dynasty of a woman who lived in a curse but because of the blood. This was the shadow of the blood. We have the real blood. The shadow of the blood changed a harlot into a woman of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you can put the verse again uh, in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 33. As this morning I spent some time in prayer and then I was spending, spending some time watching some messages and 
that this verse really hit me in a fresh light but he blesses the home of the just see you and I are made just by the blood of Jesus positionally but the part I wanted to end this message on is if you don't feel just if you say yeah I know God says I am just but honestly I don't live like I am just I don't feel like I am just I don't even think I am just I'll give you a secret honestly you don't even have to be just be in the house of the just and this is the house of the just I used to disqualify myself from the blessing because I said I am not righteous but this verse changed this morning it changed it for me that if I am in the house of the just I'm blessed that's why houses are blessed curses and blessings are on the houses belong to a local church belong to a church where Jesus is the Lord where Jesus is preached where Jesus is glorified not what you did and what you did not do not just the traditions not just the music and the pastor but where Jesus is glorified and the word of God says God's blessing will come upon you not only when you are just but when you make the house of the just your house the blessing starts coming up on your life can somebody shout amen, amen. hallelujah me and my wife after the first year of our marriage we decided to we went for a trip drove to California to speak at the youth camp we'll never do it again for the rest of our life we decided it would be fun to explore America and so we drove I don't know 16 hours or something so tired preached there at one camp and after the camp uh, we decided to stay for a few days in California and explore just the Sacramento and just watch a few things and we had a chance to visit this forest that has the tallest and the oldest trees in the world they're called them redwood trees and you can see uh, this is actually the the tree the root of the tree and some of these trees there are thousands I think the oldest of those trees is about 2,000 years of age they grow to 300 feet high the fascinating part about these trees is their roots get no longer than from 6 to 12 feet so imagine the root system that's only six feet but the tree is as tall as 360 feet you may say how can this tree live so long in the midst of forests in the midst of attacks and winds and storms having such a small root system this is the interesting part about these trees though their roots do not go deep their roots go wide and connect with other trees intervene with other trees where they link up with the roots of other trees sometimes up to a hundred feet wide and connect with other trees so they don't go deep but they connect with other roots so when the storm comes it does not hit the tree it hits the forest and yes it could destroy the tree because it's so tall but because the tree though not deep is connected to other roots the, the storm and the winds cannot overcome and break these trees because it has to break the forest and that's what I want to encourage you right now one of the blessings of belonging to a house is that you get connected and please understand not just to the pastor but you get connected to each other see when you come on Sunday this is great when you show up to a home group you get connected to the leaders you get connected to other brothers and sisters when you have a need when a storm comes in your life and it will honey it will come you connect yourself in the roots to other people next thing that happens you overcome every storm you grow higher though you're not super spiritual but because you're super connected the blessing is on the house of the just plant yourself in the house don't just attend church be church don't just come for the things that you like and I understand it's a sacrifice on Sunday morning it's your day off 
you could have done so many other things you have to dress up get your crazy children together and you get in a fight before you get to church and you're like man what's the point of coming here now you and your husband you know somebody has a period the other person has some other this, this disorder and you come in you're like man this church time is not gonna help us at all and you come mad and you come cranky you're like man we would have been better staying home but listen you still made your way here you connect yourself together to the Holy Spirit you connect yourself together to other believers when Monday hits before work we have morning prayer it's for our church we have Friday night prayer and I understand you can't make it all of these things but if you're on Friday night sitting with your spouse for an hour trying to decide which movie you should watch you should come to prayer you should get up and say you know what honey we've been here for one hour we cannot decide should we watch Avengers or Jack you know Jack Reacher we should just go and just be Jason Bourne in the morning in the prayer with the church in Jesus name and fight against spiritual forces can somebody say amen <laughs> curses come through the blood curses get broken by the blood of Jesus and the blessings come through the blood and the blessings come through being in the house amen church I want you to rise to your feet.